Thank you. How many cases? How many legal cases? How many legal cases? Um, I, I need to go, I don't know offhand. Well, was it 3, 30, somewhere, somewhere between ballpark? I can't give you an exact figure. I prefer I to come back uh, with, uh, I to you. I you can't give me an exact, exact figure, but these, these must come to your attention. They must come to your desk. So is it more like 3 or more like 30? Just, just to give me a guide. Um, uh, it's a number of, of, of court cases, mm -hmm. um, which um, uh, doesn't give me a uh, reason to, uh, to, to worry, but I cannot give you the exact figure. I prefer to come back to you in writing to give you the exact figure. If I could just add to that, Deputy Carl McNeil, um, some of it probably inc was incurred as a result of investigations into whistleblowing, uh, which proves to be very, very expensive. Uh, not all of it would be actually court cases. Um, and some of it would be in relation to, to other matters. But suffice it to say, the, the governing authority is very mindful of the high legal costs. And I don't think I need to tell anybody here that no, legal okay. costs are high in Ireland. But we, we are doing everything. We've brought an in-house. We've, we've recently recruited uh, a lawyer in-house to help to alleviate some of those costs. I appreciate that and I appreciate the obligations arising from the whistleblower legislation. They don't always get to court, so it's the ones that get to court that I'm asking because they must be high profile within the governance of the university. They must come to your desk and I'm, I'm surprised that there isn't a general sense from perhaps Mr Butler that somebody can't give me just a general figure about, is it three high court proceedings, is it 30? Just, I, I know it's not 30, so it must be. So just tell me, just, it, it, do, these must, do they come to the, okay, let me ask a different way. When, uh, if, if I were working in the UL and I instituted high court proceedings against the university, would the fact of those proceedings or the nature of it or the management of that, whose desk would that come to who, within the university? It, it comes to the corporate uh, secretary. And, uh, uh, to, uh, to and does it get, uh, is it, is it, no, is that corporate secretary and then it stops, it doesn't go any higher? No, it will, it will be reported at executive uh, on, uh, on the court cases that, that, are there, uh, that, uh, that are live. And are you both on that executive? We are both on that executive, and, but I, I, I haven't got the figures at the moment for the number of court cases. I'm, I'm aware uh, of some, but I don't want to give you the wrong figure. That's as simple as that. I, I appreciate you don't want to give me the wrong figure. I'm just asking for a ballpark figure. I'm trying to get a sense of the scale of it. Well, Deputy, if I could no. say... Okay, <laughs> order, right. I, I'll, I'll use my time a... elsewhere. I'm not, I'll use my time If I could just yeah. say, Deputy, to help you, in terms of um, my role as chairperson, I would understand it to be a handful of, sure. in terms of high court proceedings Thank you. from the time I'm Chancellor. Thank you. Okay. In relation to the UL report, can I just get a bit more detail in terms of stages and process? I understand that you, that... Report was the report was commenced in March 2021. Is that correct? Uh, uh, which report? The UL, the KPMG. The KPMG report. report. Yes. It was begun in March 2021, and I understand from Ms. Harney that she's that it, it wasn't the governing authority that selected them, but it was a broad sense of one of the big four to, to, to take care of it. Who who was it that selected KPMG? Was it the executive? So body? Uh, the the um, uh, big, uh, uh, firm was selected based on the big four considered. Um, but who? Sorry, who was it? That selected was it the executive? Was it the executive that selected it? The executive selected it, okay, and, and it, I can the, give you the basis no, I'm for fine, the selection. I don't need that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry to be abrupt. No. Your time is tight. Um, when was it concluded? Um, the report uh, was received on the 21st of December, uh, 21. When did the legal proceedings that you referred to earlier commence? Um, in, in March. Uh, of, of this year, but we had uh, already uh, the threat of legal proceeding, pr proceedings prior to uh, uh, any attempt to publish. When did you receive the, the threat of legal proceedings? Um, the exact date I have to look at, uh, but it has been uh, um, was early it, in, early was in it the year. Was it before years. or after you received the report on the 21st no, I, of December? What I'm, what I'm saying is that the legal proceedings were received after, but we were after already what? After. after the report was received by the university. So the report was received by the university on the 21st of December, and presumably you had immediate sight of that. I had sight of the report. Did anybody else have sight of that report? Um, the um, a, a report was received by the Director of Human Resources uh, and uh, the Chief uh, Corporate Officer had sight of the report so and the Chair of the Risk and Audit Committee. So four people yeah. had sight of the report in and around the 21st of December. Yeah. And you say the legal proceedings were commenced in March 2022. By what mechanism were they commenced? Uh, through a High Court. 
uh, um, high, court, uh, high court case. So Ms Harney said that no statement of claim has been lodged. So it's unclear to me, are they personal injuries proceedings? Are they defamation proceedings? Is it simply a notice in the, cent in the central office that, like, what is the nature? I, I presume you don't know what the nature of the proceedings are, but they're there since March. So uh, certain reliefs are being sought in regard uh, to the report and uh, the investigation Injunctive and the report. Injunctive reliefs, is it? Is it inju injunction? Is it yes. injunction yeah. reliefs, right? And so that was lodged in March. The threat, um, the, so, so at some point between the 21st of December and March, you received a threat of legal proceedings, and that's what you say has stopped you. Uh, be, uh, beforehand, that threat was already articulated. So my, what I'm... What I'm interested in is the relationship between the executive and the governing authority. It's not satisfactory, clearly, that the governing authority hasn't had, been able to have sight of the report that it has, you know, that it, that has been commissioned. Um, and I'm interested as to how quickly after December 20, at the 21st of December 2021, that should have been brought to the attention and had, you know, that the authority should have had sight of that. The authorities were notified of the receipt of the, uh, of the, receipt of the report, uh, but in order to protect the university, the report was not circulated beyond the four people. And wh what was it that made you think that, that there were, in order to protect the university, it wasn't circulated beyond four people? Why would it not be circulated with at least the chair of the governing authority? Um, uh, it's a university. It's a university report uh, for for legal protection. We were restricted to the four people at this point. But, uh, so did you? Have, so because I can understand why you wouldn't share it with, with me as an individual, but with the chair of your own governing authority, I struggle with that. So, of the twenty first of December, did you receive contemporaneous legal advice to suggest to you that it not be shared beyond the four people? Yeah. From whom? From your own legal advisors? From, from our own legal advisors. Did, external a, legal advisors. So. So I understand it then, you received both the report from KPMG and simultaneous legal advice from presumably a different body, not KPMG, Correct. at the same time. So had the legal advisors seen the KPMG report? How did the legal advisors know to tell you not to share it with the governing authority? Um, um, the... <laughs> The legal advisers were aware of the threat uh, of legal action in, in, in the case of the publication of the report. So had the threat of legal action preceded the receipt of the report? That's, that's, what, I, that's what I said before, yes. I'm sorry, I thought you said, I, I misunderstood. No, so the, I th the, there was a threat of legal action before the, the receipt of the report in case of the publication of the report. When did the um, receipt, when did the threat of legal action I have, that to, I have to come back uh, uh, to you with the exact date. But it was in the months or weeks prior to the receipt of the KPMG yeah. report. Yeah. And so the threat of legal action came, you notified your own lawyers. Yes. You received the report, you decided to maintain it to the four people that you've mentioned yeah. and not share it with the government. Yes, authority. and to work on, on uh, uh, to publish it as soon as possible. Are there any other matters then that are not shared with the governing authority? <coughs> no. So when you prepare documents for... I'm sorry? When you prepare documents for the governing authority, you know, how, how far in advance, for example, do they receive it in advance of, of... It is really important, and I would like to stress that here, that we have an approach of partnership, of sure. full accountability and transparency in the relationship with our governing authority, and I've very, worked very hard to uh, develop that uh, relationship of trust. Uh, the, 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 sorry, the, sorry, terribly sorry. Just, uh, just so that I understand, what is the nature actually of the relationship between? The, what's the legal relationship between the governing authority and the, and the and the university? Like, I don't understand why, for example, the uh, there's such a there's such a separate there's there's such a separation so that the chair of the governing authority can't be considered cl a close enough partner to have been able to have sight of that report in a confidential way. What's the nature? Where's, where's the problem there? The, the, there's, no, there's no problem at all. The governing authority is the oversight uh, body, approve, uh, the yes. approver of strategy, policies uh, and, and, and budgets. But, and Ms. Harney has said, but Ms Harney has said that she hasn't been able to receive it and that it comes up at every meeting and that they, they look for it. So if they're, if they're the overseeing body, and I am sorry to cut across you, the time is just so tight, but if they are the governing authority and, and the budgetary oversight and you work in a degree, sense of partnership, then why can you not share that report, at least with the chair of the governing authority? 
Well, I appreciate it. We have uh, we, we, the, the report is, uh, has, uh, has been received by the chair of the Audit and Risk Committee. And for legal protection of the universities, we have not shared the, the, the report uh, uh, widely beyond, beyond these four people. I appreciate not widely, but with the chair of your own governing authority. Well, Deputy, even if, sorry, Deputy Carl McNeil, you make a very valid point, but even if it was shared with me, it put me in a very difficult position. When the President received the report on the 21st of uh, December, I remember she called me and told me she'd received it, and she told me she had taken legal advice, and the advice was to circulate it to those that may be adversely affected by the findings. And that she did, and I think it was in that process that the legal challenge was threatened. And she followed the advice from our external uh, lawyers right along and kept me informed of that and informed the Governing Authority too. We had, I think it was your intention to publish it in February at the oh, Governing absolutely. Authority meeting. Okay, my time is up. Okay. So the, the situation is that one of the people who would be adversely affected by all of this is a former employee who has lodged papers with the High Court because of, uh, obviously, the contents of the report may uh, put that person in, in a bad light, may, or that person may feel that. We can only surmise all of this, because we haven't seen it. But the chairperson of the Board of Governors hasn't seen it. Can you ask, what's the function of the Board of Governors at the university? Because I'm actually puzzled at this stage. I read all the documentation you sent us. We've been trying to follow this. And the more I look at it, I haven't been able to figure out what exactly the role of the governing, uh, the governing board is of this university. You know, and, and, you know, I've served on a number of different bodies, but I've never, ever come across a situation like this. Well, Chairman, if I could answer that, obviously the role is defined in the le legislation. You the report. Yes, that's correct. Yes, the, the, the report is, is uh, sorry, the, the role of the governing authority is defined in the legislation and the role of the Chancellor is defined in the 1997 Act and I've clearly no role in relation to operational or management issues. So we have an oversight role. We approve the budget. Uh, we approve well, the no, strategic just, plan. I don't want to hold up because there's another deputy coming yeah. in. But can I just put this to you? That the, that is it the case that the report that your body commissioned, that you haven't seen. Is it the case, which I'm sure you want to see because you've, you've outlined that, and I'm sure you're like the rest of us. Is it the case that, that, Ms. Ha that the Chancellor isn't trusted with it? Is that what the situation is that we have here? Now, why would the Chancellor of the University not see this report, which has implications, you know, and covers a very contentious issue that has been dealt with here and that has been out there in the public domain? Why would the Chancellor have not seen that? But Chairman, is the Chancellor he, not trusted, yes or no? But, no, sorry, I'm asking, I'm asking the President. Is the Chancellor not trusted? The Chancellor is, is fully trusted, but I have explained uh, to, to you and the, the, the members the reasons why we have not circulated the report, okay. and I have also stressed my intention, and it has always been my intention, to circulate the report as soon as it was possible without exposing the University to substantial risk. Okay, thanks. But Chairman, can Deputy I just...